Welcome to Time to Teach with Tammy, the podcast that gives tips, advice, and suggestions to teachers by your real teacher. So sit back and enjoy, and oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Welcome to episode 94. That's right, episode 94 of Time to Teach. Cannot believe it's almost our 100th episode. Um, Today's uh, episode is entitled One Word Theme. So that's exactly what we are going to be talking about today. Before we jump in, there's just a couple of things I want to say. Number one, time to teach was not scheduled to come back until February, but I'm just kind of, I don't know, just wanted to get a head start. And so we're doing it. We are going to get started. And then the other thing is um, the room where I record is a little empty. And by a little empty, I mean, there's almost nothing in this room now. So I know I that might affect sound quality. I guess this is a good time to let all of you know that I am in the middle of a move. And in the middle means I'm not really doing much. There's not much I can do right now. Um, But we've slowly gotten rid of some of the furniture in the back part of our house. So I guess that's kind of what we're doing. Um, This is my last school year in Mexico. So that's kind of crazy. But um, I will be returning to California this summer after 11 years of living and teaching in Mexico. So I'm going through some pretty big changes, exciting, but very scary. I think I feel like right now I might be going through um, a reverse culture shock. I mean, that won't really kick in until I get back home, but just um, a lot of feeling like I don't know what I'm getting into, even though I'm going back to my home country after being gone so long you kind of adapt (laughs) to things and almost even adopt a lot of their cultural ways or you just start to feel very much like that's your home. And yeah, so a lot of changes are happening and um, I'm sure I will keep you all updated, even though I've, this is the first time I've updated you on the fact that that's a thing happening. So anyway, Um, and then the third thing I want to say is my, my cats are around and about and somewhat loud. So hopefully that won't pick up too much on the audio, but I can't really guarantee because anything is possible. Okay. With all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and, and get started with what our topic is. Okay. One word theme. You probably have heard this. Um, perhaps you have not, but in the last, I don't even know when this started, but the one word theme, a lot of people have adopted instead of doing like a new year's resolution type of situation. Um, I've not really been into new year's resolutions for a long time. And that's primarily because I'm always setting goals. I'm always working towards something. So I don't really need the new year to prompt me into trying to improve myself when I feel like that's a daily aspiration of mine. (laughs) That is literally something I'm always working on. So I don't need the new year to do that for me. So I've not partaken in that. And who I, I don't know how long I could not tell you. And apparently other people have not either, hence where this one word theme came to be. Um, So with the one word theme, basically what it is, is you choose one word and that one word will be kind of like what you focus on um, for the year. And what I really like about this, and I want to say this is probably my third year doing this, I'm not hundred percent sure, but I'm pretty sure people. So not hundred percent, but pretty high up there. 
Um, but yeah, I think it's my third year doing this. And what I love about it is it, when you take one word, it can encompass so many things as opposed to a new year's resolution. I'll give you an example way back in my wee tiny years of probably my early twenties. I did have a new year's resolution probably back then I was still doing them. Um, for sure this one year I was because I remember specifically that I decided I was going to stop eating red meat news update. I've since started going back to eating red meat just because of things I've learned since then. But this is not about red meat or white meat. It's not about any kind of meat, it's just about, you know, goals. So I won't get into any of that, but anyway, so my new year's resolution was <clears throat> stop eating red meat. And I stopped eating red meat for many, many years. Only, only did I change that the last maybe five ish years or so. But in any case, that goal or resolution is pretty specific. As you can see there, you, there, you really can't go very far with that. You either do give up red meat or you do not give up red meat. That is it. Um, so how the one word theme is different is your one word can literally encompass almost anything. So you take something in your life that you really do want to focus on. And there's so many different ways that you can embed it within your life. So let's say, for example, and by the way, I'm just going to say right now, I'm not sharing my one word theme. I'm just a very strange person in that I don't like to send things out in the world until it's time. Okay. Um, I didn't share my word last year, but now that that year is past, I can share that last year, my word was flourish. Um, so you take your one word and you just kind of look at opportunities where you want to um, use it in your life. And it's really best to take a word that you really feel like you need to work on. So let's say someone says courage, you know, maybe they, they don't feel very brave. Maybe they don't feel like they do a lot of courageous things and that's something that they really want to do. Like Maybe they want to be a little more courageous in the things they try in the classroom. Maybe they want to be a little more courageous in the kinds of foods they eat. I know not what kind of courageous acts they want to do because this is all so hypothetical, but you get the idea. There can be, you can embed this in many different ways of your life, but the way that it's going to be most effective is you really do need to choose a word that you feel calls to you that you feel is going to grow you in the year. Last year I chose flourish because, um, I really wanted to look at, um, how I could sort of blossom and grow. And especially since I kind of knew that I would be having a lot of things going on in my life that I just, you know, like, how can I flourish as a grade level leader? How can I flourish as a classroom teacher? How can I flourish as a mother? <clears throat> so all of these things that I can encompass in my life, which, as I said, is really the amazing thing of having a one word theme. You have so much more growth opportunity than you do if you're just choosing a resolution, which is usually a resolution is more like, you know, I'm going to stop doing this one thing, or I'm going to start doing this one thing. It's good and great, <clears throat> but a little bit limiting. So, all right. So now that we know all about the one word theme, I'm just going to kind of share a little bit about, you know, how do you keep this one word theme growing? I actually wrote a blog post, which is amazing. It was published on January 12th, 2020. Um, and it's amazing because the blog post itself is not amazing people. It's probably very underwhelming. I won't even direct your attention there. Although if you're very curious, you could go there. It's on <clears throat> my blog notes from a first grade classroom. The amazing part was that I just, I published the post. Um, if you've been listening for a while, you know that I have a blog that I've been keeping since goodness knows when I don't, I don't know when a lot. It's been, 
it's been ongoing for a while, but I've been, I just actually recently looked to see what has been my average published number of posts per year. And it's about seven. So I manage about seven new posts, which is actually much better than I thought it would be. Um, and that was only looking at the last couple of years. So I don't know that that's actually an accurate figure, but anyway, this is neither here nor there. Um, that was the amazing part, not the actual blog. Um, anyway, so I wrote a post about this and I thought, you know what, I'm going to talk about this on the podcast because the whole reason why I wrote the blog post, it was actually more for me, um, because I want to be more intentional about making sure I'm working on my one word theme. I have, I feel like I've done a good job with it in the past few years, but I feel like I only occasionally, um, actively or consciously, consciously trying to think about my one word theme. And I, it comes back to me when I need it, but I've not been super intentional on making sure I have set times to reflect on my one word theme. So that's what we're going to talk about. So if you've not decided on a one word theme and you feel compelled to have one, maybe take a moment to just think about yourself and what it is that you feel you need to really work on in your life or you would like to grow. Um, you know, and a lot of times it could be words like flourish words, like courage, bravery, um, mindfulness, you know, you can definitely take those things in any area of like, when, where, where, and when do I need to be more mindful? Where am I seeing that I'm not mindful? Um, and so anything like that, maybe take a moment, figure out what is it that I really need to work on growing in my life and then go from there. Okay. So, um, now that you have that and you've decided on, um, on your one word theme, we'll kind of go into, okay, now what do we do to keep this going? So I created a list and I am sure it is, I have six things on here, so I'm sure this is not in depth, but these are things that I thought of in, in terms of what are ways that, um, we can keep this going now that it's decided. So that's not a one and done and you never think about it again, because that would really go against what we're trying to do here, people. Okay, number one, you can create a word cloud using your word. True story, I did that. Yes, I know people. This is my life. I spend my free time creating word clouds, okay? It's what I do. It's what I do. Um, but I really liked it because I really had to think about all the things that is connected with my one word. So if we just go back to the example of courage, you can think about, okay, what are all of, what are synonyms for courage? What are different words that relate to it? And there's so many different, I don't even know what word cloud um, app I use, but I found something online and I just use that. And then I saved the image. And then from there, I put it into a blog post, by the way, I don't even know if I, boy, I didn't even put this in my blog post, but that's one of the things that I do is I have, um, a private blog. So it's kind of like a journal. You could do this if you want a paper journal. I just like the electronic version because I can access it anywhere. Um, and I just don't need one more notebook floating in my life. That's just me personally, not having anything against notebooks. I dearly love them. Um, but anyway, so I, I just save the image in my personal blog and my blog is devoted just to my one word theme. And it's nice cause I can go and revisit it at any time and just kind of look at what were all those connecting words? What were, um, things that I kind of thought of when I thought of my one word and just kind of see the connection, something I can revisit anytime, um, so yeah, that's something that you can do to kind of just start really getting to know your word. And it's kind of amazing when you start doing that, you start to see all the connections that even initially, um, you don't necessarily see. Okay. Um, number two, which is not on my blog, but I'm going to create this as a number two 
um, is create a private blog because I didn't realize I did that. And I mean, I realized I did that, but I didn't even think to include that on my list. And I, I'm finding that having that private blog or a private journal um, could be in an actual notebook. You don't have to do it in a private blog, but having a place where you're actually going and you're able to um, reflect on it all the time is such a powerful tool. So because I know I have that, I can go in there, I can reflect in there, I can revisit old posts that I have in there, and it's just a nice place to keep all of it um, organized. So yeah, create a private blog or keep a private journal where you're kind of keeping your musings and your reflections and whatever it is you're doing with your one word theme, you can do it there. So that was not it, it, that did not exist in my list, but I'm not even sure why I didn't do that. Or perhaps I created my list before I had the private blog. I, I know not what I did. Um, okay. So next, and I will give credit to my sister-in-law for this one because she came up with this idea and I don't know if she's done it, but we were kind of like having the conversation. She does the one word theme. She's really the, I know of other people who do it, but they're primarily on Twitter. But let's keep in mind, these teachers on Twitter who do this are also teachers who write books and do all these amazing things. So of course, they got, they're got they really good at reflecting and stuff and doing all of that and doing the one word theme. But in my real life, my daily life, I'm not other, other than my sister-in-law. I really don't know of anyone who's doing the one word theme. Um, so her idea was that she wanted to kind of keep a poster of her one word theme, um, and keep it at work. So I think that's great. I, and I think you can do that for any place, um, that is going to be highly visible and with high frequency. So at work in a place where you are always going to see it. So for us, I guess that would be in our classroom, maybe next to our computer. I'm just envisioning that that's a place where, I'm going to um, really see it um, a lot and frequently. Um, I've also since heard people discuss um, on Twitter that even just maybe writing it on a sheet of paper or in a post-it and keeping it on your bathroom mirror or, you know, it's the same kind of idea like a poster or um, a post-it and you're keeping it in a very highly visible place where you're going to be frequenting Um, and you're going to see it constantly. So just keeps it at the forefront of your mind so that you're not forgetting. It's just prompting you to think about what was my one word theme? Oh yeah. What was I doing? Mm, Yeah. So that's that. I I guess that's number three. Um, number four, again, another, uh, Twitter idea. So I actually reached out to my Twitter PLN Sorry, I got to take a second to say how much I love Twitter. I know I've done uh, an episode before on Twitter, but you guys, like, if you are looking for a network of people who are passionate, Twitter is where you need to go. You know, aside from your actual physical PLN, the teachers with whom you work with, uh, I just find Twitter is where I can go at any time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If I need something, I go there. And so I kind of sent out a little, Hey, can you, you know, share with me your ideas for, um, keeping the, keeping your one word theme present. So thank you. And I, that's where I got this information. So someone said that they use an image as a screensaver on their cell phone. And I thought that is excellent. What, more perfect way. You're always checking your cell phone. We have that so readily available and in easy access to us. So as a screensaver, I've not done that yet. Um, and I'm not entirely sure that I will, but I might. And I do think it's a fantastic idea. Um, I've just not done it because I like my current screensaver. There's really no other good reason for that. Um, but maybe if I actually, you know, go into Canva and start creating some really cool images with my one word, I might be motivated to actually do it. But it's a great idea and people are doing it and you might want to do it too. I don't know. Okay. Tip number five, 
choose a day to reflect on your word and do so weekly. So when I initially set my word and was thinking about how am I going to be even more present and more, you know, frequent with my one word, I decided Friday, Friday is a perfect day. Well, guess what? For me, Friday is not a perfect day. It turns out it ha- it turned into Saturday being the perfect day. Let me tell you what happened with Friday. By Friday, I mush. By Friday, I am the equivalent of a bowl of oatmeal, probably a cold bowl of oatmeal, just kind of sitting and, I don't know, thickened and not very flavorful, not very appetizing. That that accurately describes me on a Friday. Um, that's where I'm at on a Friday. I am so tired, so exhausted. Not only do I not have energy to reflect on my one word, I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to reflect on my one word by Friday. Sorry, one word, nothing personal, nothing against you. Love you dearly, but I can't do it. I can sleep on a Friday. That's what I can do on a Friday, but reflect, don't, don't, don't even ask that of me. So you might be like me, you might choose a day and you're like, hey, this is the perfect day to do this. And then you might find out, no, it's really not. And the great thing is you can change it. So I've changed it to be on Saturday. Sometimes I actually don't do it until a Sunday and I try to do it the day that I've decided. But just having that day as a planned reflection day is actually so helpful because then I'm like, you know what? I actually have this going on, so I can't even take the time. But I'm finding that when I'm in my shower is like such a perfect time because what else is going on? Just a little bit of shampooing and conditioning. So it's a great time for me to like, that's already my me time. I'm showering. I'm, you know, getting, it's just a me time. Do I have to really explain the shower? I feel like I don't, I'm putting a lot of energy into something I do not. So it's just a great way for me to reflect on my one word then. So um, yeah, choose a day and keep to it or keep relatively close to it, but it's better to just keep to it. Um, because then, you know, for sure it is happening. Okay. Number six. Um, this is another Twitter idea. I just, I amazed at, and I've not done this. Um, but I'm just amazed at all the different ideas that is out in the Twitter verse, create a bracelet with your one word or phrase. Okay. I think there are places where you can actually have bracelets made. I don't know of those places. I'm actually, because I'm in the middle of a move, a lot of the things that I'm doing is not by trying not to buy more things and accumulate more things. I'm trying to purge things, um, which is why I'm not buying a bracelet. Although I think this would be a small thing that I could very easily get, but I'm just not there in my mindset. I'm trying not to buy things. Um, but I can see that if I were in a, in a place where I wasn't planning on moving and I'm not wanting to accumulate more things, I could see how this would be super helpful. Um, the other reason why I personally am not doing it is because as you know, I'm not sending my word out into the world aside from a few select people. And I don't mean like, Oh, just few are privileged enough to know my one word theme and nobody else. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about my one word theme. They don't, most people probably don't know. I have a one word theme. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about that. But like I said, I'm just the kind of person who I'm very, I choose when and where to send things out in the world because I just like to keep things for myself. Um, whatever that means about me, I, I don't know. But um, so it, obviously if I were wearing a bracelet with my one word theme, that would be contrary to the way I believe about my one word and just being very guarded with it. So I obviously I would not do that, but there are many people who are feel very differently and they send their one word out for everyone to know and they're fine with that. And that's great. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's just who they are and what they do. And if you're that kind of person, then you might want to put it on a bracelet and wear that bracelet. Um, I do not have to explain why that would be helpful. You have your bracelet on you. You look at it every day. You're going to remember your one word on a very regular basis. And then lastly, um, number seven, join a group dedicated to the one word theme. Yes. 
I had joined a Voxer group. And if you're not familiar with Voxer, Voxer is like a walkie talkie app. Um, you can download it on a smartphone or a smart device, um, but you can also use it on the computer. So a couple of years ago, I was in a Voxer group, but I really didn't um, stay active with it. But there's also, there's actually a Facebook group that I found that's dedicated to the one word theme. So um, if you're interested in that, I actually have the link on this blog post of mine. Um, so again, it's notes in actually the actual, okay. So the blog post, the blog itself, it's called notes from a first grade classroom. I was a first grade teacher when I started this. Um, but the actual address is notes in first, first is spelled out F I R S T grade and then dot blogspot.com and then it's slash 2020. Um, it's a long URL. Just go to the blog post and you'll see it's the most, one of the most recent ones, um, or just do a search, but I feel like the URL is very long. So maybe I will include it in, um, the episode show notes, but not spell it all out for you. Cause that would take 25 years and I don't have um, 25 years to spell that out. Although I did take quite a long time explaining all that. Okay. So that is it. You guys, um, seven, what turned out to be seven different, um, ideas of ways to keep the one word theme present and in your life. I do find I've loved doing the one word theme. I find it so helpful. I'm already working on growth. So for me, I just feel like this has been something that helps me to improve, not just one thing like don't eat red meat. That's so limiting, but it allows me to really go into many different aspects of my life. So if you're interested in something like that, I encourage you to just think about it. Just think about it. And if you decide to implement it, now you have seven ways that you can implement it. Um, and I'm sure there are many other things that you can do. And in fact, if you are doing other things to keep this close and present and ongoing, I'd love to hear from you. Um, the best way to reach me is on Twitter. That's where I am people. Yes, that's my world. Twitter. Um, my Twitter handle is at Tammy J one, two, three. And I'd love to hear about how you are keeping your one word theme present and ongoing in your life. Um, okay. So that's it. Let's go ahead and get started with the wins and fails segment wins for the week wins. I would have to say is I am finally finished with mid-year benchmarks. People, that is exhausting. I've spent ever since we came back from January, from January, ever since we came back in January from winter break, that's all I've been doing. That's been literally my life, my life. Um, and it's nice to be done. I am officially finished. There are a couple of things I think I have yet to just score, but it's done. It is done. And on that note, my same win is also my fail. I've not been able to teach in small groups. So basically, and that's where I feel like the bulk of teaching happens is small groups because that's where you can really cater things. I've not been able to do that because I've been doing benchmarks. So I, I'm at the point where I'm like, I just want to teach. I just want to teach my kids. There's so much growth still needed. And I'm so happy that I get to finally do that again. But the fail is I've not been able to do that so far since coming back from winter break. It's a fail, but it's a fail. I don't know how to not make it a fail because it's kind of the reality of like, we have to do the benchmarks. It's what happens. I don't know what to say about that. It's happening. It happened. It's done. Um, so my win and my fail are super related and like two different sides of the same coin. What do you do? I don't know. <laughs> you just get back in on Monday and teach. I guess that's what's happening. Um, anyway, that's it. You guys, I'm glad that time to teach is now back <laughs> a little bit earlier than projected, but I was really eager to get this going. Um, please remember we're now on a two week, um, cycle. So every two weeks, a new episode is published. I, when I first kind of announced this to you guys, I really didn't get into all of the whys, but a lot of it is because of my move. I'm just in a very, 
I'm in that kind of place in my life where I've got a lot going on and a lot of different things. I mean, we always have a lot going on, but things that I just need to be super focused on. Um, and that does include time to teach because I love, I love doing this and it's more a place where I can kind of think of and reflect. It's really more for me. (laughs) It's, I guess I have selfish purposes, but it allows me to, um, think about my own practice as a teacher and what I'm doing. And, um, but I'm just in that time of my life that I've got so much going on that I can't really be my best me in my life and produce an episode every week. But I also am really liking how this allows me to have enough content and feel like I have enough to like really do quality episodes. So we'll definitely be sticking to the schedule. Um, for the unforeseeable future. But that's it, you guys. Again, um, if you have anything about One Word Theme or anything at all that you'd like to share with me, I'd love to hear from you. My Twitter handle is at TammyJ123. That is at T-A-M-I-J-123. Until next time. Wait a minute. Wait one minute. Before you go, don't forget you can catch our show notes online at www.timetoteach.libsyn. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. We're also on Facebook at Time to Teach. Don't forget to check out our Facebook group, Teachers for Effective Curriculum. And if you're an educator with your own podcast show, I invite you to join our brand new Facebook group, Teachers Who Podcast. Let's grow a community where we can network, problem solve, and discuss anything and everything podcast related. I'll see you there.